Zach with Quantum Land Design here again. Today we're going to talk a little bit about site control. Now you might refer to it as site localization, calibration. Uh, we're going to use the term site control to, uh, to be consistent today. Uh, it's one of the most important parts of setting up any project for 3D machine control and we'll walk through a few basic principles that, that you can keep in mind when you set up any project site uh, to make sure you get it right the first time when your grading starts off on the right foot. So our goals here today aren't necessarily to make you an, an expert in site control, but, but to make you competent and make sure you understand the basics of it so you can make good decisions out on the project site. Uh, we break these down into what we call the four principles of site control. Uh, we'll walk through each principle and help you understand uh, why it's important and how it applies to, uh, to every one of your projects. First, we'll start out, I want to take a quick look at, uh, at base station setup and, and shooting in control points uh, before we jump into the four principles. So first, let's take a look at base stations. Um, if we take a look at the base stations here, you'll notice that they're set up on good solid poles. Uh, they're above the ground, you know, five, six feet, and they don't have any trees, power poles, uh, anything around them that can obstruct the GPS or the radio signal. I also want to point out something on this uh, bottom photo down here. What this contractor does is set up another post right next to their base station. Uh, they shoot in the elevation on it and use it as a quick check. So right when they set up their base station, they immediately have a place that they can check their, uh, their calibration, make sure their elevation and their northing and easting are accurate uh, before they go out on the job site. Here's another base station setup that's not quite as common. Uh, this is a, a fixed length uh, tripod. Uh, you can use these on more temporary projects. I, I wouldn't suggest it on a long-term on a long-term job, but if you're only there two or three days, it might not justify putting in a permanent GPS pole. Uh, a couple things you need to keep in mind with these. Um, one is you need to make sure that it is uh, it's level. You set it up properly every time it's level, and also that the height of that GPS antenna stays the same. If you move that GPS antenna up or down, it will move your project site up or down with it. So these are just fine to use, but use caution and make sure you set them up properly. I want to show you one example of a poor GPS base station setup. Uh, this one's mounted on a power pole along a road project, and this contractor had consistent GPS issues and radio issues throughout the project. Um, the, the two problems here are one is the power pole shades the GPS satellites from that direction. So in this case, this uh, GPS base station was not getting any satellites on the north. Uh, it can also give you radio issues. It can, uh, it can shade the radio signal going in that direction. So for, for those purposes, this is not a good base station setup and, and not recommended. Let's take a look at our, uh, our ground control points here quick. So I always like to request that the surveyor uses cross lath to mark them. It, it makes them obvious and it also makes you know that there's something different and something special that shouldn't be taken out. And one really handy thing you can do is have the surveyor mark the point number, your northing, easting, and elevation on every ground control point. You can see that on both of these here. Uh, that will allow you to do a double check when you shoot in your ground control to make sure you have the right information in. And it's also kind of handy if you ever need to take a, a laser and set up a 2D system. Uh, you've got the elevation written right here for, uh, for what that is. Here are a couple pictures shooting in control. So notice we have a bipod is being used on both of these, uh, on both of these uh, uh, setups. Uh, you want to make sure you use a bipod, get a good and level, and don't hesitate to use that bubble level. Make sure it is on your rover pole and calibrated and level. Get your eye right over it, look right down at it, and make sure you're level and straight before you, uh, before you shoot in any control points. Um, it's recommended. I've been told to shoot them in anywhere from 30 seconds to 3 minutes. Uh, somewhere in there is probably fine, but just make sure you're not shooting in control points for one, two, or three seconds. You need to let that GPS sit there and, and bake on that control point and for a little bit, take multiple measurements to, uh, to make sure it's accurate and consistent. So let's step into principle one. Um, principle one is, if at all possible, hire the engineering firm that designed the project to place your site control. So we need to understand how our projects are, are laid out and set up in, in, the, in the real world and in CAD. So when the surveyor first gets to a project site, they set up a, basically a virtual grid, just like the graphing paper that you might have used back in high school. Uh, that grid could be uh, arbitrary for the site. It could be just for that area. It could be in some type of state plane control, a, a regional or, or maybe even city or plant control. Uh, that usually doesn't make much difference to you what control system it's in. What you have to know is that your project has to match that, uh, that system. So if we take a look at an actual project, this is a dentist's office. 
you can see the grid lines under it show the underlying grid that that project is set up in. Um, if you have the engineer's surveyor set the site up, they should get it in the right coordinate system to start with. And uh, second of all, if there is a problem with control, they'll have the authority to fix that problem and, and figure out what it is and remedy that for you on the project site. Uh, it's a little bit of insurance for you and, uh, and you don't have to mess with getting control reset or, or figure out some problem. Uh, I'll tell you a couple quick stories on, a, on contractors that either try to save a couple bucks or maybe a little bit of time uh, trying to hire a different surveyor to play site control. Um, one of them was a project, uh, it was actually up in Wisconsin, the uh, contractor hired the low bid surveyor to come out and place the site control. He did. Uh, contractor got started, got all the dirt work done on the job, and foundations were in the ground. Well, when the, uh, the building contractor showed up to do his work, he hired the engineer surveyor to come lay out, the, lay out his building, and they found out the site was rotated 2.8 degrees off, uh, off of what it should have been. So all the foundations were in the wrong place, and all the dirt work was in the wrong place on that one. So that's just one example of why you need to, if at all possible, hire the engineering firm that designed the project to place your site control. And here's the site control laid out on the project. So that shows kind of where the points might go, good positions for them. And when you shoot those in, that will line up your project with, uh, with the real world. Now let's talk about principle two, surround the site with control points. Now your project's located in the real world and imagine it was a piece of paper that you had to pin down to a globe. So the job site's represented by the red line here, and to pin down that piece of paper on the globe and get it to conform to the shape of the globe, you'd have to pin it down around the edges, right? So if you had just, say, one pin, the paper could rotate and twist around that point. If you had two pins, one side could come up. So just uh, we have to surround the site with control points to get it pinned down to conform to the world. Uh, another analogy I like for this is, is laying a sheet over a dirt pile. Uh, you'd have to pin down the edges of that sheet to get it to conform to the shape of that dirt pile. Let's take a look at a real world project here. So the project's uh, represented by the red line, and let me go ahead and show you the control points that are laid out around the project. So there they are. We've got several surrounding the project, and we have a couple roughly in the middle within the, uh, within the project boundaries. Now, if we take a look at these control points and draw a line between the outlying ones, we have the job site surrounded with control. So this is very important. Those outlying control points do all the heavy lifting and locating your job in that virtual grid correctly in the real world um, to, to get your project in the right place. Let's take a look at a couple other projects here while we're at it. Uh, this one's a roundabout, uh, obviously an odd shape project. Uh, notice most of the control points are outside the project boundary, and, and that's just fine. As long as you can get good GPS and radio signal at those points, uh, there's nothing wrong with them being outside the, uh, the control boundaries. Um, also notice there's one control point here in the middle. It was probably taken out during construction. That's not a problem at all because we have these outlying control points that surround the project. Uh, in this case, if we even lost one of these outlying control points, say this one, we could still bound in that project with control and not have any issues. Here are a couple more examples of, uh, of roads. Uh, the one on the left you can see is an interstate highway project. Notice we have control placed outside the right-of-way and, uh, and along the project. Uh, we also make sure we have the, uh, the exits uh, bound in with control too. Uh, long roads can be tough. Uh, in general, around every half mile uh, and about 250 feet outside the right-of-way is what, uh, what a lot of people recommend on roads. Uh, you may need more or less. That's a good one to check with your, uh, with your GPS supplier before you start a long road project. Uh, over on the right, we have just a small city street expansion. Just notice we've got the site bound in with control here, and, and some of them are outside the project boundaries. That's not a problem at all. Now let's take a look at a common problem we see on highway projects. Uh, this project was about a six mile long county highway. It was dead straight, and the control was placed right down the center of the highway. Uh, they had 20 or 30 control points down the length of the project. Uh, it seemed like plenty for the road, and uh, when they shot in site control, uh, the system did not show any errors. Uh, everything looked tight. Well, if we take a look at the cross-section view, you see the, cross the control point here in the center. And the problem is when there's control just down the center, it's really not any different than having two control points. The site can sit there and twist and move along that, uh, along that center line. So what that will manifest as in the field is a, a road model that tips and twists along the length of the project. 
Now, you might see some fairly minor errors, say two tenths at the edge of the road, but by the time you get out to the edge of the right of way or in the ditch, uh, that can add up to feet. Uh, we've seen projects where this is uh, this has been three feet off just along one edge of the road. Uh, it can tip and twist both ways. It can be a confusing and, and kind of strange problem to have. Uh, if you do have a control set up like this on a road project, uh, we suggest you go out and request that the, the county, the city, the state uh, set you control outside the right away of the project and, uh, and along the entire length of it to get that project tied down right. Here's another one that's a little more interesting. So we have a small landfill project here. Notice it's pretty well surrounded with control. We have three control points lined up along the side and one out here on a manhole cover. Seems like it's probably good enough for a project like this. Uh, I've got it shrunk down here just a little bit in the plan view and here's the cross section view below to show you roughly where those control points are. Uh, the problem is um, the surveyor came out, did the as-built, and found out that this side of the project was about two-tenths off and over here was on grade. Well, what the problem was, was this control point over here was about four-tenths off. Uh, since these three were all in a row, and once this one was shot in, the GPS system thought it was all good. It didn't show any errors, and when we were out grading in this area, there was nothing really to tie into in the real world. Um, but what that did was actually push that side of the project site up. So the entire time they were out grading, their virtual grid was moved up in the real world, four tenths clear over on this outside edge, which equated to about half that, two tenths on this side. A uh, tough problem to find when you're out grading on a job like this, but when they come out and shoot in the as build, it'll, it'll get discovered. So again, poor practice here. Make sure you surround the job site with control and do not have most of your control in a straight line like this. Now here's principle three. This is calibrate to a minimum of five control points. So you'll see we have a little strip mall project here. It has to fit between these two properties. There it is overlaid. You'll see it gets close to the parking lot edges here and here are the road tie-ins. Now let's go ahead and shoot in our first control point. Uh, it's up here in the corner. All right. So we've got that shot in. The problem is that project can still sit there and twist and turn on that single control point and tip. So it's not controlled very well, it's just very roughly located in the real world and it's not reliable. Now let's shoot in a second control point over here in this corner. Now what that does, that's going to fix our 2D problem, our northing and easting problem. That's going to get the job site rotated back on those two points, but it can still tip and twist vertically in this direction. Now we have another control point over here. Now we have three control points. Now three might seem like enough. You're oriented, it's stable vertically, but let's think of a bar stool for a minute. So a three-legged bar stool never rocks. One leg can be just a little bit shorter than the rest, and you probably won't notice a difference when you're sitting on it, but it will be a little bit off level. Once you shoot in that fourth leg, um, the bar stool is stable, which is just like your job site. So once you have four control points shot in, your GPS system can check for vertical and horizontal errors, and, uh, and make sure it's in the right place. Now, we like to see at least five shot in to give you a little bit more redundancy and, and more places to check out on the job site. So there's a fifth control point down there. So say if this one got taken out by a, by a road crew, you still got four good control points bound in to finish out the project with. So principle four is trust but verify. So we've got our, uh, we've got our virtual grid located in the real world. Uh, we, have, uh, we have projects surrounded with control points properly, and we've shot in at least five control points. All right. So this is the same strip mall project. You can see the four corners here that, that fit on this screen. So we like to see the surveyor set a, a handful of site benchmarks that you can check and make sure your model's in the right place, both vertically and horizontally. Uh, one good spot is the building pad. So the building pad's a key feature on any project. Uh, you can have them stake a couple building pad corners, uh, have them set down a hub with a building pad elevation that you can bounce off of and make sure you're right. Now, another good spot are the site entrances. Uh, no one wants to go in and cut that concrete in the wrong place. Uh, it'll also make sure your job ties back into the real world right. So you can have them stake those and give you elevations on those points too to double check. Uh, here's another spot out in the, in the back corners here. Have them shoot in those parking lot corners. Uh, another good place to check and make sure you're on. Here's another thing. So plan sets always have several clues and areas that we can check to make sure we're tied into the real world right. So this is back on that strip mall project and the, uh, the vertical benchmark was a fire hydrant, the nut on top. So you need to take your GPS and, and shoot on top of that nut and make sure that you are matching the vertical control for the job site. Here's another project, a, a new city street tying into an old one. 
So we've got several clues along here and, and things that we can check our, our GPS system to to make sure we're tied into uh, to the real world. Um, right here we have all these bandit holes along the edge with the rim elevation noted. So we should be able to go over and check the rim elevation on these. Uh, these are usually pretty reliable and, uh, and a good check. Uh, we also, something that's not quite as accurate but can be a decent ballpark check, are some of these contour lines. Now this assumes that the original survey was correct, the, the topo was good, but usually they're a decent ballpark check to see if you're in the right neighborhood. Now here's another project that's a little bit different. Uh, this one is a, uh, a waterway project, a drainage project. Uh, there isn't much to tie into in the real world here to check against, but we do have these culverts out along the outside edges. So we've got the invert elevations here. You have to make sure you dig through the silt on these to get down to them. Uh, be a little bit careful with things like invert elevations. Uh, you know, they can be disturbed by water. Uh, frost heave can change them a little bit over time, but they should be fairly close and at least let you know if you're, if you're right or close to it. Uh, on a project like this, I'd suggest uh, having the surveyor set a handful of stakes, maybe at these intersections where these small waterways come into the main one. Uh, they could also shoot in some of these station markers too to make sure you're straight and aligned properly. Over here on the right side, we have another city street tie-in. So we've got the tie-in elevations here. Now, again, this is a road. There can be a little bit of frost heave and a few changes, but those should be pretty darn close. And you should have had the surveyor stake these tie-ins too. So you've got a couple different areas there that you can check and, and make sure you're accurate in the real world. So here's a few other things you wanna keep an eye on. Um, one is your control points. So go out and bounce off a control point every day. Shoot that in, check it, make sure your system is set up right every day before you grade. Uh, here you can see we have a dozer with a rusty blade, hasn't been used for a while. Um, we'll take the rover out and check the blade corners and make sure they're right and check those against what it reads in the cab. So you've already got your rover set up right and double checked on site control, go out and check it on the dozer blade. Uh, also, gravity never lies, so take a level, set it on your dozer blade, and make sure that it's, when it says it's level in the cab, it, it really is level. Uh, that's a quick and easy check. Make sure you clear the dirt off the bottom of the cutting edge and, and get the level right up against it. And here's the most important thing to check. You've got your rover set up and right on. Go out and check that finished grade. Uh, it really doesn't even matter where your dozer blade's set. What matters is the dirt that rolls out from under it and the grade you deliver to the customer. So get out there with the rover, do some spot checks around the project site, and get down the flow line of that ditch and make sure that's right. Don't rely on the machines 100%. You need to double check that all the time. So that wraps up our four principles of site control. One, we need to hire the engineering firm that designed the project to place the site control if at all possible. That will get that virtual grid lined up in the real world. Uh, we need to surround the site with control points to get it boxed in and, and make sure it's controlled properly. Uh, remember the bar stool analogy here, we need to calibrate to a minimum of five control points and also trust but verify. Uh, you can't do enough double checks out there in the field to make sure you're lined up right. That concludes our site control series. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to hear from you. Uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn, uh, 3D Grading on Instagram, or uh, feel free to, to send me an email anytime. I'd, I'd be happy to hear from you and answer your questions. Thank you.